This is going to be a full spoiler discussion for the third book in the Stormlight Archive, and obviously parts one and two also. So if you have not read the first three books in the Stormlight Archive, turn back now, because I'm going to ruin it for you by saying, you know, at first, I was like, oh man, that sucks about Alucard. It really, really does. And then Moash looks at Kaladin, and he gives him the Bridge Force salute, and I'm like, you bastard! Hey, what's up, bookworms and air sick lowlanders? I am Mike, and we are here to talk some spoilers about the third book in the Stormlight Archive. This is Oathbringer, a book that everybody thinks I hate because I have criticisms of it. But hey, we're going to talk about a little bit of spoilers. This is not a recap. This is not a summary. It's just a little kind of a, a breakdown where I talk about the characters, my favorite moments, and I'm really just opening up as a forum for discussion below for all of the people to talk about their favorite moments in the book. Because if I did a beat by beat recap of this, it might be as long as the audio book. So let's get into some of these things and go by characters here. Obviously, Dalinar is the big one. This is his book, right? This is what Mike has been waiting for. I've been waiting for this because Dalinar is my dude, right? And this is his flashback book, and I thought the flashbacks were just okay. Uh, I thought that some of them were overly long. Some of them just were like, okay. You could have just like mentioned that in a sentence in one of the other ones. I felt like maybe three or four of them could have just been gone or just combined into one chapter or something like that. Uh, look, yes, it was very tough to read. My favorite character basically being Baby Hitler, as I keep calling him. But uh, it, he's also an oaf. I mean, he's just completely loony. And, and we knew that he was a tyrant, but I always just thought of him as, as a very calculating and methodical kind of tyrant. And he's just kind of a bloodthirsty thug. I mean, there's one part where someone tries to kill Gavilar, and he kills the guy. And then the same knife he just killed a guy with, he starts eating his steak. I mean, come on. That is, that is some real, real oafish stuff. So uh, while I didn't like them all, uh, I do think that the Eevee reveal, obviously, was very good. And I don't just mean that, you know, you didn't read her name. Like, and you actually got, you know, to know what her name was. But obviously, it's Dalinar accidentally roasting her like a marshmallow. Obviously, that is the part that is very, very messed up. And you can see, hey, that kind of thing might change a guy. I can understand if you change your ways. I can understand if you become even more crazy. I can understand if you're just a complete drunkard basket case like Dalinar ends up doing for a handful of years. So I get it. I understand why he's like he is. So with that, mission was accomplished. And I, I kind of talked about it in non-spoilers. I, I think that his relationship with Navani in present time is so refreshing. And it's so different than most of these books where you just see the, the adult characters are just, they're so miserable because they've got so much responsibility. When those two are together, man, you can feel the love. So I think that Sanderson writes those two really, really well. And, and you know, when his memories start coming back and he's wallowing in depression again, and, you know, he's getting, he's getting freaking, uh, what, excommunicated from the church and stuff like that for saying the Almighty is dead. Any other chick would have been like, all right, you need to get your shit together. But you know what? She steps up. She takes the ambassador role. She's basically running the kingdom while he's down and out and Elicar is, well, <laughs> dead. You know, so it, it makes sense that uh, he writes these characters so strong. And I like that. I really do appreciate that because there's so many times that I feel like the adult characters are just there to be stupid so the kids can figure it out, right? So uh, I really, really do like their relationship quite a bit. And Navani, like I said, man, I think that she's kind of low-key the MVP of this book. I really do. And uh, I'm very happy that they got married by the Stormfather. Very cool scene. Uh, look, my favorite flashback of Dalinar's was not the one with Evie, but it was the one with Adolin and Renarin where he's a drunkard and he's starting to come you know come out of it and he starts telling them i have been a terrible father and he only starts making excuses for him he's like no i have been a terrible father and you've grown up awesome without me you're a man you're amazing and, you know and, and and adolin is just like blown away but he's still like worried that evie said all this bad stuff about them about him to the kids 
And he asks, you know, Renarn in, in a drunken stupor, what did your mother say about me? What terrible things did she tell you about me? And he's like, she told me that there's no one more honorable and that you were just the greatest man in the world. And he just loses it and hugs Renarn. And I almost lost it because uh, this is stuff I, I think I, I hinted at before. It, it is really personal, but I want to talk about it. And that's why this series means so much to me is uh, this book came out right around the time that my youngest kid was two and I learned that he had some developmental issues. And I don't know if you've dealt with that. It is a tough thing for a parent to deal with. It was something for me that was hard to process and I became immediately, because look guys, you're already spooked about fatherhood. You really are, especially if you're like me and you come from a divorced family and a dysfunctional family and you didn't have a good relationship with your father, you're terrified of making the same mistakes, right? So having to deal with something like that, I was already terrified of not being a great father. And there's parts in here where Evie calls out Dalinar for being neglectful to, to, to Renarin because you know he's got these issues or whatnot. And I had already been like terrified. I want to make sure that I don't just like, you know, spend all my time with the kid who's normal and, and not spend any time with the kid who actually needs the extra attention and stuff like that. So it was something that really resonated with me. And when 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 uh when Evie calls him out for it, it just completely shattered me. It was just something that just really was just the timing, I think, of when this book came out that it really, really just crushed me. And that's that that scene is written so well. And I think again. That's why I love this series. He writes, I keep saying damaged characters, but he writes these characters that deal with things I've never seen in a fantasy series before. Real life problems. And it's 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 something that obviously resonated with me. So each one of these books now has had a major, major personal element that has resonated with my life. And uh, if he keeps that streak up, geez, I might be a complete basket case by book five. But uh, look, uh, I think that Dalinar's interactions with Tara Bangian in this there's some of my favorites. Um, the one about the about, about who you should hang or what or you should hang them all or whatnot. You know which one I'm probably talking about. But it was it was one that really stuck with me, even though I can't think of it off the top of my head exactly right now. I'll probably get it wrong and I'll get red pinned in the comments. But again, anytime they have a conversation, I love it. It's really good stuff. Especially their last conversation, where he basically is truthful with him about, you know, being the one behind Zeth trying to assassinate him. That took some stones, right? And then you get to see at the end, Banjian, he don't care. He just wants Carbron taken care of. He don't care about any of these fools. That's what he wants. But I love the whole stuff with him. One day he wakes up and he's an idiot. The next day he wakes up, he's a genius kind of thing. I love that. I love that. I love the diagram stuff. I need more of the diagram stuff. I, I really do dig that. So again, that you get some stuff from Teravangi in this, but not enough that you feel completely satisfied. And then that pact that he makes with Odium at the ending is just like... This is going to get interesting, folks. I have to say my favorite Dalinar parts outside of that are probably anytime him and Odium have a scene together. Those scenes are absolutely mesmerizing. I could not get enough of that. I think that while I said that Odium was the was the villain the series needed, I think it's just because he isn't just an evil mustache twirling villain like Sanderson's written a couple of times. He, he's done that a couple of times. With this, I feel like Odium is just the right stretch of like evil Gandalf. I really get a lot of evil Gandalf out of him. He's just so, so calculating. I love it. And he's just, he doesn't shout. He doesn't do anything. He just seems like, except, you know, when he's like, we killed you, Sorfa. You know, we, we killed you, uh, uh, uh. Uh, odium, not odium, uh, honor. We killed you. We killed you. And, and, but other than that, you know, he's always just so calculating and, and, and just quiet, just reserved. I think he just always seems like the cat that is just so cool under pressure. And I think that's the villain that this series needed. And I'm glad he wasn't just a one off. I was afraid he would be, uh, you know, ended too soon, like a Sadius, like an Amaran, which I'll talk about here in a second. I, I feel like. He, him getting beaten in this one and he's probably going to be good old odium strikes back in book four it's what i'm fully expecting unless he's got another big bad uh coming i, I don't know I, I don't think you're going to get a a bigger bad than odium in this series but who knows that might be funny words to go back on but i love anytime dalinar and odium are together especially you cannot have my pain i loved it man so good so good i loved it probably the best dalinar moment in this series besides giving up his shard blade Four, bridge four. Shalon, I struggled with her stuff 
in this book quite a bit when she wasn't with Adolin. I love the development and the relationship between her and Adolin. Beautiful dialogue between those two. They're, even though I really, really disliked the time in Shadesmar, I felt like when those two were together, being intimate, talking nicely, lovey-dovey to each other, I absolutely ate it up. And I was just like, dude, Adolin is just a good dude. The stuff, she, she's got some issues, right? She's got some personality problems, and he never is phased one time. He rolls with it. He tells her he believes in her. He tells her to be herself. He even admits that he killed Sadius. And when the moment that I absolutely loved him is when he says, not only did I kill Sadius, I don't feel bad about it. I was like, I don't either. I love it. So again, Adolin right here. When he got ran through, I was like, don't you do it, Sanderson, you son of a bitch. So I was glad that uh, Renarin has the healing hands of Jesus, right? Uh, but yeah, Shalon stuff. Look, I know the ghost floods are going to end up being very important, but so far, I don't care. I, it's the ghost blood stuff. Anytime it's a ghost, ghost blood chapter, I'm just... Yeah, so if you dig that stuff, man, that's just it's not work for me. I felt like she already did the long con thing in book one, and this is just not as interesting. I also feel like the, the Sadius investigation just kind of like, hmm, just kind of wrapped that one up. It just seems weird that that was like the task that was assigned to the two of them, or really to, to, to Adolin, but, you know, Shalon was helping them out. But it does seem like it just kind of disappeared, but... Uh, I don't think it's going to be over. I think Sadius' uh, widow is definitely the calculating behind the scenes type. I'm definitely thinking we're going to see more of that. It's not going to go away. It did, did seem like it just kind of dropped it even after he admitted it to Dalinar. It just seems like they kind of dropped it. So again, I, every time I start talking about Shalon, I'm going to talk about Adolin because I feel like their moments together in this were fine. And I love that he ended the love triangle. Shalon chose Adolin and Adolin and Shalon got married at the end of this. Uh, I did... <laughs> I, I love that romance. I, I think it's extremely well done. It's so much better than even what, what Eland and Vin were. Or Ellen, sorry. Sorry, people that get triggered by Eland. Um, <laughs> I just love the way that their relationship was developed. And I love that at the moment that Eland is like being himself. And he's like, I'm going to be the bigger man. I'm going to walk away. Because I, I, I see how you and Calvin look at each other. And gosh darn it, he can fly. <laughs> And Shalon just like goes off on this little diatribe about how, oh, so you're just like, you're this, this, this. You always encourage me to be myself. You always say the right things. It, 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 but, but you know, hey, I can't be with you because, hey, that guy can fly. Good. It's just a great, great little rant there. And it, uh, I was I was excited for it. I was very happy to see it. Not just because it ended the uh, triangle, but it was the relationship that I wanted. I did not want Shalon and Kaladin together. Um, he killed your brother, all right? So, and you know about it. So, yeah, I wasn't really feeling that one at all. So, uh, I'm glad that it ended the way that it did and we can move forward now. I don't know if there's a relationship in the future for Kaladin. Personally, I don't think he's making it out of the series alive. So, I don't think it really matters, but... We'll get to that when we get to uh, the wish list video for Rhythm of War. Speaking of Kaladin, I think he's just okay in this book, his storyline, uh, which is amazing because the first two books, I felt like his story was maybe the best. It was really, really good. But this one is just, uh, I mean, he's training people, cool. Uh, you know, getting the other bridgemen to fly. So that's neat. That's that, that stuff. But then like the last two-thirds of the book uh I, I don't know i don't know it didn't really do a ton for me I, I do really wish that uh his arc with amaram had been more satisfying to me i, I fe felt like it he wanted it to be really satisfying to the reader but him getting saved by rock instead of killed by amaram just i don't know it wasn't quite as satisfying as i wanted i wanted that anigo montoya moment you know, or, you know, where he gets his revenge and you just feel really, really, fuck yeah, you know, that's what I was waiting for. And I just felt like I didn't get it. Uh, and again, just like Sadius, I felt like Amaram kind of got built up and just completely turned him out of nowhere and then just, yeah, just killed him. So I'm glad we got Odium now. I'll say that. But I, I again, just like with Sadius, I feel like maybe Amaram went one book too early. Uh, but here we are. Here we are. I do think that Kaladin's best stuff is his interactions with his Zura where he's in the wall guard and it's really great seeing 
crossover? Okay, that's right, this is spoilers. It's great seeing Azure now that I know that it was Vivenna, one of my favorite characters in the Cosmere. I had no idea. I had not read Warbreaker when I read this book. So when I did my little light reread, as I called it, I went back and read all this stuff. Dude, they talk about Vasher. I didn't have any idea what Nightblood was. I didn't know that she was Vivenna. This is awesome stuff. I had no idea. I thought Zahel was just like some sword trainer. I had no idea that was Vasher. So many crossovers here. So guys, man, it's, that's just the coolest, coolest crossover ever. And you know, you get all these say, okay, yeah, Hoyd shows up and everyone, you're like, ah, whatever. This is the first time I feel like when people say, well, do I have to read these other books to get it? You don't have to, obviously. I didn't, but holy hell, it gives you so much more depth to this universe, this connected universe that he's created if you have read it. But uh, yeah, great, great stuff. But you know, Calvin, he, he befriends these uh, these parchment. He feels like maybe, you know, he understands where they're coming from. So he kind of befriends some of them. And then he befriends this wall guard led by Azure. And then you find out that they're going to fight and kill each other. So having to see, you know, the parchment that he befriended kill these new friends that he's made in the wall guard which is absolutely soul crushing and that is even before moash became the biggest pile of shit in this series it's like he said hmm you're missing sadius huh check this shit out because look killing elicar that sucked especially when he really got me i really thought elicar was going to say the words and it was going to be just this awesome moment for elicar finally you know i've been waiting for elicar to have that stepping up and being a badass mom. I was waiting for it. And he subverted expectations in the best way by not only having Moash follow through with what he tried to do in book two. That's bad. That's bad. But then he gives Kaladin the bridge four salute and I'm like, oh my God. Oh my, oh man. Absolutely just gutted for Kaladin there because you know, he every bit gave the, the metaphysical spear to Kaladin's heart that he just pushed through uh, through 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 Elikar's heart, and uh, I was just it was awful. It was just awful. Uh, again, Elikar wasn't a character I was crazy endeared to, so it's not because but it, just the insult to the injury there. Just you son of a bitch. There's a reason that there's a Reddit page called R slash uh, Fuck Moash. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and, you know, that's why I think uh, every time I do a Stormlight video, I, I have to check the, the filter comments that YouTube does and approve all the ones that say fuck Moash. That's a very, very popular comment on all of these videos. So when I was doing my, uh, my, my non-spoiler and my spoiler reviews for the first two books, I like to approach those as someone that was reading them for the first time without tipping my hand because people are like, dude, why are you saying such positive things about Moash? Because at that point, what could I really say? You know, I thought for sure he was just going to have the redemptive arc in this one. And Sanderson said, not so fast, my friends. But wait, there's more. Not only does he do that, he also kills a freaking Herald. Oh my God, this guy. So yeah, he has cranked it to 11 with the villain level of Moash in this. And, and I'm here for it. I can't wait to see where he goes with it. But I mean, again, this is just what makes the Lord Ruler the Lord Ruler. Every time you think you know which way he's going... He flips the script on you in a way that doesn't feel like he's doing it just to shock you. It's done in a way that's well delivered and you're just left being like, yeah. So, all right, I'm going to roll along here. So I'm going to kind of try to speed wrap this up. Look, Zeth, I think Zeth's, uh, his redemption arc is pretty satisfying. You know, I, I like the Skybreakers. Uh, seeing Nail again is cool. And Nail, by the way, uh, that's that's the darkness from Edge Dancer. That's the only thing I liked about Edge Dancer. I've had people ask me if I was going to review Edge Dancer. No, because I didn't like it. And I don't think you'd like what I have to say about it. I already talked about Lyft in my non-spoiler review. Uh, I don't like the character at all. I feel like she's out of place in the story. I definitely feel like she is a YA character that, that, that Sanderson just wrote in here for the heck of it. And I don't feel like that this series has room for that. Just my opinion. I don't care for her. Yeah, she, oh, she calls Donner old. And she talks about his butt. Oh, ha, 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 ha. It's just so funny. It's just like, that's just like, that's YA shit. I don't need that in this book. Ooh, she likes to eat pancakes. Big goddamn deal. I don't get understand why people love the character so much. Uh, I I don't know. I, and you can't say, oh, Mike, you just hate women because I think Shalon and Yasna and Navani are some of my favorite characters. Vivenna is some of my favorite characters within the entire Cosmere. So you can get lost with that stuff. Anyhow, uh, yeah, I don't like that character at all. She's just that tropey 
chatty teenager who's there to always be the smartest person in the room and tell the old people why they're stupid for fighting amongst themselves. Blah, blah, blah. It just felt so super tropey that not a fan at all. Not a fan at all. But back to Zeth. Look, I didn't read Warbreaker before this, like I said, and that's unfortunate because I felt like the Nightblood stuff would have made much more sense to me. And uh, now, after I reread some of that stuff, really, really good stuff. I like Nightblood quite a bit. Guys, I love Warbreaker. That's an awesome book. And I think besides Stormlight Archive, that's probably my favorite book because it feels very... Uh, Stormlight Archive 1.5, I think you could say. Especially that you have this much. You got three major characters crossing over with it. So, uh, yeah, again, I hope we see uh, some crossover from maybe maybe uh, Mistborn. Somebody hop over there or maybe, uh, God, I can't think of her name. The girl from uh, The Emperor's Soul maybe shows up in Roshar or something like that. So this opens the door for more crossovers, and, and, and I'm here for it. I have people ask me, am I going to start the Rhythm of War preview chapters and i said no but i read the first three last night so <laughs> i guess yes i am uh, i said i wasn't going to i was going to wait till like november but i was just too excited after i was you know like i said i reread a big chunk of this and i was just i was just enveloped in that world again and i wanted to read some more so i read the first few there i'm not going to talk about it now don't worry about it but uh, i have done that so people have asked if i'm going to be covering you know those chapters on the channel no that's that i don't want to cover anything that isn't officially you know released yet even though i guess it is officially released you can know what i mean right so i might uh I, I do plan to do a rhythm of war wish list right before the thing it's something that i did with all my wheel of time videos and a, and a couple of uh dresden files videos is where i just talk about things i would like to see happen it's not theories i'm really bad at theories i, I you know i think that i understand this series and then i'll read some of the theories on the discord and i'm like I don't know shit because they're talking about stuff I don't even think about. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, the Herald stuff sometimes <whistles> kind of goes over my head a little bit. So I, I think that the fact that I haven't reread this, I think that that's that's a big reason why maybe some of that stuff isn't really clicked with me, like it has so many others. But uh, again, I think that this is a series that will every bit be as amazing on a reread because you'll see so much more so um i will definitely be doing a wish list it won't be theories but it will be a wish list and i will probably do a spoiler talk discussion like this for those first uh 19 or 20 uh chapters that are going to be released before the book comes out because like i said i've slated myself two weeks to read that look it took me a, a lot longer than that to read this one so uh, i i doubt that i can finish that in two weeks so every little bit of a jump there helps and i can't wait guys i feel like this is the biggest release since uh since i've been running this channel so i'm very excited all the people that are going to be basically reading at the same time and plenty of people to talk to so guys jump in the discord i can't wait to talk to you there about this so hit me in the comments guys what was your favorite parts about oathbringer what's your favorite the favorite parts of the whole series up to this point please but don't talk about rhythm of war yet just in case everybody else including me hasn't finished reading those preview chapters and i will talk to you guys there life before death strength before weakness journey before pancakes